Best Buy, Toys R Us, IBM, Lego, eBay, Dove, who the hell knows? I don't know these other ones either. But I mean, that's crazy, right? You're just looking at a letter. This episode, I'm going to learn what goes into building a brand identity. I don't know much about creating a brand from scratch. Elements of a brand identity, I'm guessing here, of course, name it, make a logo, make the logo bigger, word mark, colors, how the brand talks. I don't know what goes into it, but I'm excited to figure it out. The things I want to learn about brand identity is like, how do you come up with the ideas for a logo? You know, what do colors say about a company? In the video world, we have so many ways to tell the brand story, but how do you do that in the way that you can actually portray what the same things are for like the logo and the, and the feel of the brand? How do you do that on the video side? So this episode, I'm gonna go back, <laughs> read all this stuff that, that I've got. We're gonna go to New York for two days and attend the brand new conference, uh, talk to the founders and the experts that are gonna be there, interview them and see what goes into building a brand identity. That's a hard word to say. Identity. We all know what a brand used to be. Ouch. But what is a brand now? These days, just about anything can be a part of a brand's identity. From a tweet, to a concert, to some guy getting shot out of a thing over another thing. A brand's identity is not just a logo, website, or business card anymore. For some brands, color is a huge part of their identity, like UPS and Brown. It's not just any brown, it's a very specific Pantone color called Pullman Brown, and UPS has it trademarked. Same with Tiffany's Robin's Egg Blue, and the Home Depot's Orange, Target's Red, even the Minion's Yellow. Sorry, kids. Aww. While it makes sense for brands to protect their identities, some are a bit more aggressive than others. Like when Louis Vuitton unsuccessfully sued Chewy Vuitton Tog Biscuits or when the North Face had to settle out of court after trying to sue the pants you off of the South Buck. Some brands are finding out that it's better to be lenient, even encouraging consumers to play with their brand identity. Doritos has made it a tradition to crowdsource their Super Bowl commercials. That's a whole lot of tortilla chips. Or Scion, which embraces the aftermarket industry. Lego is particularly good at this. They have a website where fans can submit their own designs to be put into production. Top designs right now include the Titanic, the International Space Station, and the Ghostbusters headquarters. Just goes to show that LEGO knows its brick is just as important, maybe more important, than the logo. But some brand identities just don't need to be that fluid. Look how little the Ford logo has changed since 1909. Same with Starbucks, though their latest rebrand is a little different. And you probably noticed Uber rebranded recently. Brand identity huh? has become such an important part of our culture that any change or update is now big news, news, which is kind of crazy, but it makes sense. Logos are some of the most recognizable symbols in the world, so it's no wonder we treat them like celebrities. They basically are. A quick image search for logo tattoos comes up with a disturbing amount of results, showing just how obsessed with brand identity we really are. From a logo on letterhead to a logo on someone's forehead, that's a taste of how far brand identities have come. As you'd guess, there is a ton of stuff out there on design. So I thought I'd just show you my favorite things I found and a couple key points from each one. Made it to New York. Check out the city. Well, we had to do the tourist trap stuff, right?
headed to the brand new conference. This conference is pretty cool. It's, uh, it's run by the guys that run the brand new blog. This is gonna be like drinking branding from a fire hose. I think that this whole conference is gonna just be about making the logo bigger. That's all that designers do, right? I, I think the best part about their blog, though, seriously, is reading the uh, comments section. There's lots of trolling going on. So I think we're gonna try and try and meet some of the trolls today. Are you check it out. In the conference, I mean, you're surrounded by the best of the best designers, like people from the top design agencies in the world were at this conference and you're, you know, rubbing shoulders with them. Honestly, just being around these people and talking to these designers about, you know, how they do their, their craft, I think that was probably the coolest part about this whole learning experience. What makes a good brand identity? I think something that's iconic and simple and bold and can also translate well across a lot of medium. It's continuity and it's a mark that translates well into different scales. You know, you're really trying to create a voice for the company right. and how you want others to portray you, not just visually, but the feel you get when you, you know, when you talk about the brand. And the way I would do it is it's like finding that one word that kind of defines you and uh, just kind of building everything around that one word. A brand is a person, so you need to know the inner workings of the person um, before you can dress them or like uh, show what they look like. I just hope they don't find out that I can only draw stick figures. I love just being surrounded by designers and kind of, you know, talking design, getting nerdy with people, and then seeing like the great professionals that have so much experience. And I feel like I just come back to work like really refreshed, excited. Are you one of the trolls on Brand New, on the, on the site? Uh, occasionally. Yeah, I try not to be. I try to like balance it out, a couple good things and then one bad thing. Yeah. I'm okay. always thinking it and not, not trolling it, hopefully. Okay. What are some resources that you find for learning about brand? Take online courses. Uh, this website, Brand New, is a huge source of learning for me. I read books. Uh, just online surfing, reading articles, that's why, uh, that gives you current learning and current trends. Brand New started in 2006, it's a blog, so it's a little bit of a mix of uh, generating content, designing things, creating products, selling them, uh, maintaining some blogs that we have, um, and just kind of like a random... Events like today? Yes. It's everything that you have as, an, as a user of that brand, any touch point, be it from advertising to the logo to any brochures, anything that makes you experience that brand. To me, the, the brand is the experience. The logo is the thing that you see. The identity is the stuff around that logo, and the brand is the experience uh, that completes the whole thing. I think the ones that stand out are the ones that are genuine, that they're not trying too hard. You know, I could say, well, go to design school, or uh, there's a lot of people that are self-taught. Yeah, well, getting the software and playing with it, but it's also just looking in books, looking around. I mean, just walking down the street here in New York, you can start to see all the different brands of cars, you know, from the smallest bodegas to the giant um, Apple store. I think with graphic design, a lot of people mistake it for art and that there's oh. a mode of self-expression of some kind. And it's not. I mean, graphic design should be a very objective thing that you're giving solutions based on rational decisions and considerations that you're making. A lot of brands now have to live uh, in motion. Making sure that a brand operates properly in motion is a really important part uh, and something that, you know, it's not just a specialty, it has to be something that you just offer uh, by default pretty much. Definitely a fun event. Glad I got to go check it out. Some stuff that stood out to me though is uh, that a lot of it is based on psychology and, you know, the mind and, and how much goes into coming up with concepts and, and going and studying art and you know, finding other ways of, of, of being inspired uh, with your designs. It's not just throw a logo together. It's, you know, what is the voice like? Um, how does the brand move? What are the colors? How does the brand talk? How does it feel? It's how the brand interacts with people like a human would. And that's, that's really crazy, pretty cool. Okay, there's not like one right way to brand a company, but there is a right way to brand a company. And the right way is to do it organically and make it you can't force the brand, and it has to be at every touch point of the company. Well, I definitely respect how a logo and a 
brand are created now. But I definitely am more opinionated now that I know the process and what to look for to critique too. When I got back from New York, I had the cool opportunity to talk to Rodney Abbott, who works at Lippincott. They're a great design firm. Picked his brain for a while. We don't have, a, there's no formula in terms of the process that we go through. So every designer you know, probably brings their own sort of approach to how they like to work. First thing is, you know, try lots of stuff. So do as much work, as much different kind of work as you possibly can. Always show up with a notebook, take lots of notes and ask questions. You can never rely on your, on your memory to, to sort of take everything in. And then the final one would be, uh, for me, it's, you know, it's about sort of the ego and, and leaving it at the door, just being open to ideas and feedback. I worked with Degree to build a uh, brand video. So there were a few attributes of Degree that we wanted to embody in this video. You know, we wanted it to be scrappy and, you know, a little bit gritty, not just a clean cut way of doing things. And that's, that's what Degree's about, is about learning from any way you want to learn and, and get credit for that. One of the things we landed on was making neon signs because it takes experts to create neon signs. And so we wanted to take that expertise and show it in a way that also showed the brand. We had him design the Degreed logo in a neon sign. I'm a neon expert now, by the way. After spending a whole day with Ryan, I know a ton about neon. I even sniffed some. Good, not the argon though, because the argon has mercury in it. All right, so if you want to see my expertise in action and see how this sign was created, hop over here, click this, watch the video, and post it on your Facebook page so your mom will see it. You know, she's the only one still using Facebook. So here's what I spent on this episode. I had the flight from Salt Lake to New York, which was actually pretty cheap. Still cheap, you should go there. I had the Airbnb, which smelled like your grandma's house. Somebody probably peed in the corner. I only gave it two stars. I had the ticket to the conference, worth its weight in gold, for sure. I also took a New York City tour bus with the Degreed crew. The racist comments were free. And I read a bunch of books. Here's the list. It's hotter than hell in here, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got this hat on, it's catching all the sweat. If you want to learn everything that I've learned in this episode, you can follow along on my pathway on Degreed. It's the Ryan Learn Something pathway. It's the cool one with the backwards hat because that's a theme around here. You can either click the link in the description or click right here, follow along. On the next episode of Ryan Learn Something, I learn about market research, why people like stuff, and how to get them to like the stuff that you're selling like crappy hoverboards with batteries that start on fire. Awesome. You should click those videos and then come back. <laughs>